Are you a song leader at church? In this video, I want to give you some of my tips to help you improve your song leading. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Victor Tay. I pastor the church in Liverpool. So we're an independent, Bible-believing Christian church in Sydney, Australia. So if you're in the area, hopefully you'll come by and visit us. So there are three areas I want to talk about when it comes to song leading. Uh, the first area is how to sing. Now, you don't need to be the best singer in the world to be a good song leader. There's just really three things that you need to even be a song leader to begin with. One is you need to know the song that you're leading very well. Uh, number two is you need to be able to sing in tune. And number three, you need to be able to sing loud. Unless you're mic'd up and you're up, you know, mic'd up to an amplification system, speaker system, then you may get away with singing a bit softer. But you really need these three things to be a good song leader. You need to know the song well, you need to be able to sing in tune, and you need to be able to sing loud. So you may not have the nicest sounding voice, but if you can do these th three things, then you have the potential to be a good so song leader. Because if you've ever been in a church and the song leader hasn't been very confident, hasn't sung in tune, hasn't sung very loud, it kind of makes the rest of the congregation sing a little bit softer as well. A couple of other things with how you sing as well. You want to make sure that when you start a verse or a chorus, you need to start confidently and definitely, because it really helps with the, conf with the congregation's confidence um, to sing louder if you start confidently and definitely. You've probably felt it yourself when you've sat in a congregation and the song, there's no definite start to the verse or the chorus. Generally, you're waiting for the song leader to start before you get into the singing. So as a song leader, you can't be like that because you're leading the singing. So you need to make sure that when you start the verse, you start the chorus, you just got to go for it, man, because if you don't, everyone else is going to hesitate and then it kind of sets that hesitation and they start softer for that whole verse or that whole chorus and you can destroy the whole spirit of that song just by not being bold about how you start each verse and each chorus. Now make sure when you are song leading that you are actually song leading, that you are actually leading the congregation. So if the congregation or people are singing out of sync with you, guess what? They're wrong because you're meant to be song leading. And why is that important? Because sometimes the congregation sings too loud and some, oh, sorry, sometimes the congregation sings too fast and sometimes the congregation sings too slow. So it's up to you as the song leader to bring the congregation back in line with the beat that you believe the song should be sung. So if the song is a more upbeat song, you're trying to speed them up, you don't want it to be sung too slow, or if the song is a slower song, you don't want it to be sung too fast. So it's up to you as the song leader to bring the congregation back into line to give the spirit of the song the right pace and the right beat. Now, if you have musicians in church, even more important as well, don't let the musicians lead the song. Too often in churches I see the real song leader that is up there is the musician and they're playing and they're setting the beat they're setting the speed and the song leader is really just up there singing with the music and just conducting to the beat of the music that shouldn't be the case if you're song leading you need to make sure you have an understanding with the musicians that they need to follow you with the beat rather than you just following the musicians now why is that important because sometimes the musicians, if they're not that experienced, you know, they might be a little bit nervous as well. They've got their head down and they're, you know, smashing away the keys and playing the song. They don't, and because they're generally not singing along with the music that they're playing, they don't always have an idea of how comfortable it is to sing the song at the pace that they're playing. So they may be playing too slow. They may be often, often, more often than not, they play too fast. So it's up to you. You're the song leader. You're singing the song. You know what it feels like to sing the song at the pace they're playing. And if they're playing too fast and it's hard to sing the song at that speed, you need to slow them down as the song leader. So make sure you are not following the musicians, that you are leading the songs so the musicians are following you to make sure that they're not playing too fast or too slow. Now, the second area of song leader I want to talk about is how to conduct. 
Now, you might be thinking, well, do I, do I need to conduct? What, what, what does it matter if I conduct or not? Yeah, well, usually, you know, if you've been at a church where the music musician is just playing the beat and there's no use for the conductor, that's probably what people are used to. But if you're singing a cappella, or like I said, you need to be leading the songs, leading the musicians so that they don't play too fast or too slow, conducting is very important if you are unable to be heard as a song leader. So the conducting gives a visual cue to the congregation that of the speed the song is meant to be. And with musicians, it's even important as well because you need to set the speed of new musicians. Now, where conducting is really important, because in the middle of a verse or middle of a chorus where the singing is just going along at a steady pace or the steady beat, it's not so important. But where conducting is really important is at the start the end of the song, the start of the next chorus or the next verse, or any pauses that there are. And you'll notice that in in a church where the song leader is very strong, the congregation starts strong and ends strong and starts the next verse strong. Why is that? Because it's subliminal that if the conductor is good, he's giving that visual cue to the congregation when to come in on the next chorus, when to come in on the next verse. And there's actually, you know, even when I learned musical theory and about conducting, there's always like that that breath just before the first beat. And that gives people that visual cue, like, hey, we're about to go. So think about a song like, you know, We Have an Anchor. Um, that That's a good one because that's got a lot of pauses. So let's say we were conducting We Have an Anchor. Um, it would be something like this. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife? When the strong tides lift and so on and so forth. So you can see if I'm conducting that in a church congregation, they know when I'm going to, will your anchor hold, and on the pause, storms of life, it also tells them how long to pause for as well. So there are many songs that you know, like sometimes with these songs that have these pauses, and there's always that awkwardness of some people coming in and some people ending too early. Well, a good song leader removes that awkwardness. Why? Because if people are following him, he's making it clear hey, this is when we're going to start, this is how long we're going to hold the note, and that and that sort of thing. So that's where conducting is really important. Now let's talk a bit, bit about the conducting method. So a few tips I want to give people there is, when you're conducting, one thing is you want to kind of make sure you hold your hand a little higher than is comfortable, your, your arm. Because oftentimes I see song leaders conducting but because they're conducting at a height that's comfortable to them, they might be standing behind a pulpit or standing behind a podium, and you can't even see, you know, their hands moving and conducting. So, you know, this level may be comfortable for you, but when you're conducting and you want your arm to be seen, it, it really is held at a position where it's not really naturally comfortable. So I would kind of bring my arm up and conduct up here, cause, and then it makes sure that even if I'm standing behind a pulpit, people can see my arm moving and then they know the pace at which I want the song to be sung and it keeps everybody in the same beat. So you do want to kind of hold your arm up higher than is naturally comfortable. And also using larger motions than you think is comfortable because some people they conduct and they think they're moving their hand a lot and it's not really moving a lot when you're viewing it from far away. So you want to hold your arm up and you want to kind of move it bigger then is naturally normal. And when people are watching you conduct from far away, you'll see yourself on video sometimes, and then it just looks normal. But the way it felt was actually a bigger motion than, than you thought. Now, the other thing I see is when you conduct, you don't want to have a limp wrist, right? Because it looks really feminine and it looks really bad and really silly. So when you conduct, you know, don't have a limp wrist. You want your wrist to be somewhat firm and you want to conduct from the elbow. So you have your arm up and treat your arm like a stick, like a conductor's baton that is moving. And that will look a lot better, a lot more masculine than this thing that's like this waving in the wind. And also from far away, it's hard to, to follow conducting that just looks like this, that just looks like something flapping at the top of your arm. Whereas from far away, if you have a definite 
and clear movement, it's a lot easier to follow conducting that is like this um, rather than, than this. Now, if you have musicians when it comes to conducting, you want to make sure that the music- musicians can see you because sometimes in some churches, the piano is facing the wall. It's facing away from the stage and the, pi- pi- you know, the, pia- the, the musician is just playing in their own little world over there. Well, how do you expect to keep them in the beat of the music if they can't even see you? So make sure that you turn the piano, you turn the musician so they can actually see the song leader so the song leader can not only lead the congregation in singing, but they can also lead the musicians. Also with musicians, another tip is sometimes it'll be help, it can help if you conduct the introduction to the song as well. Sometimes if you, for a church that has musical instruments, the musicians may play a little introduction to the song before people get in and actually sing the first verse. So as the song leader, it's a good idea sometimes to conduct that intro because that way you're setting the pace of the song or the beat of the song from the get-go rather than them playing like a really fast intro and then they're going to kind of have to guess how fast you want to sing the song. Or they play a fast intro and then just keep playing the song fast and then you have to try and slow them down, you know, with the beat rather than you just conducting it from the very beginning and setting a beat to go into the song for the congregation. So hopefully there's a few tips for you there in terms of how to conduct Let's last section is let's talk a bit about conducting patterns. Now, some people think, uh, you know, oh, song leading so complex. How do you know what pattern to conduct for which song? There really isn't that many. There's only basically three patterns you need to know, and you'll be able to conduct probably every single congregational hymn that you will ever song lead in your life. So the three patterns, there's basically a two-beat pattern, a three-beat pattern, and a four-beat pattern. These are not the technical terms, but this is how you can think of it. A two-beat pattern, three-beat pattern, and a four-beat pattern. So a two-beat pattern would be a song like Jesus Loves Me. And how you conduct a two-beat pattern is you just come, you go down and out, and then in and up. So down and out, in and up. So a song that is uh, in a two-beat pattern would be like, Jesus Loves Me. This is a two-four time signature, and it would be like this, you know, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. So you come down and out, and then from the out you come in and up. And that's just how you would conduct a two-beat pattern. The 6-8 time signature is the same pattern as well. So this is a song like Redeemed. So you think about Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. So you see it's just a simple out, up, out, up, out, up. That's a two-beat pattern. Second pattern would be a three beat pattern. So the three beat pattern goes like this. It'll go down, out, up, down, out, up, down, out, up. Now, I don't know why it is, but when I was taught musical theory, for some reason, the second last beat always goes out across the body. So you may be asking, why does it go down, out, up instead of down, in, up, down, in, like across the body, up? So it's something about, I don't know why it is, but it's something about the second to last beat always goes outside the body so that they can see that second to last beat and they know the next beat is going to be the upbeat before the next one, which is going to be down. So down, out, up, down, out, up. So songs that have the three beat pattern, one would be To God Be the Glory. That's in uh, three, four. So to God be the glory, great things he hath done. Um, and Blessed Assurance is 9-8, but that's the same three-beat pattern. So, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. So that's two-beat pattern, three-beat pattern, And the last one is the four beat pattern. So the way that goes is, remember, second to last beat goes out. So we're going to add another one, which is down, in, out, up, down, in, out, up. So this is the most common pattern, the four, four pattern. So think about a song like When We All Get to Heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace, right? 
When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. So you see how that's the four beat pattern and a lot of songs follow the four beat pattern. So don't get tripped up by all these, you know, different waving patterns. There really isn't that many. There's three patterns that you need to know. Two beat pattern, three beat pattern, and a four beat pattern. And then generally there are these common time signatures, two, four, and six, eight. Uh, so this is when you see the two over the four at the beginning of the of the sheet music, or six over the eight, that's gonna be your two beat pattern. If you see a three over a four, or you see a nine over an eight, that's gonna be a three beat pattern. And a four over four is gonna be a four beat pattern. Anyways, I hope you learned something in this video. Um, I always wanted to do a video where I give people tips about song leading and help people that want to learn song leading in my church. And maybe it will help people that want to lead some songs in your church as well. So I hope you learned something. Like the video. If it was helpful, comment to let me know what you think and you can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. So thanks for watching and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.